Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Who was notably absent yesterday. She was missing. Where did you go? Where did I go? Oh, I was with my parents. I okay. was with uh, Mama Sparkles and Papa Sparkles. Mama and Papa Sparkles. Not Mr. Shopping. Not Mr. Sparkle. Did you no. Simpsons? Mr. No. Sparkle. No, no. This is Mama okay. Sparkle and Papa Sparkle. I want to um, be Mr. Sparkle. So you can, you can be Mr. <laughs> Sparkle. That's fine. We had to go somewhere, so I was with them yesterday. We had a good time. So okay, so a good time without me, uh, Mr. Sparkles. So we're going to talk about Rooster Teeth again today. There's been a little bit of a development since the last video talking about Rooster Teeth. Now, if you've been following the Rooster Teeth drama, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Rooster Teeth has had multiple rounds of layoffs this year. They only announced that you heard about one, but you heard it turns about one. out there was a couple others you didn't hear about. Yeah, they were trying to keep that on the down low. They've had a uh, a lot of drama surrounding their working conditions and now the latest is uh, there are some former Rooster Teeth animators who are not happy with Grey Haddock uh, who recently exited mm -hmm. uh, people are saying he got pushed out he's saying he didn't uh, did a video on that yesterday I'll link to that one in this video but now we've got more animators speaking out against him publicly and also it seems like the friendly media is trying to do damage control by uh, telling everyone it's all fine, there's going to be a season two of Genlock, even though it hasn't been announced yet. Yeah. Because that's what they do, the friendly media. What was interesting to me was we heard from different people. It wasn't just one person. We heard from several people. And we didn't tell you everything they said in, in the videos. And there was similar stories. So, like, you know, things we didn't tell people were confirmed by people. You know what I mean? On the back end. So, it's like... Yeah. We, they couldn't have known that the other person told us the same thing. Right, right. So we actually had people uh, come to us, and then after the video was out, too, we had more uh, more confirmation. Now there's even more confirmation from another former Rooster Teeth animator who's publicly saying these things, right. actually confronting Gray in public. So um, before we get into the video, please subscribe to Clownfish TV for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We hit 61,000, 61,000. Oh, it's hard to tell anymore since they do that stupid... Oh, I hate that. The abbreviated... I don't like it either. Subscriber so count. we're at 60, almost 62, I think we're heading for it. Who knows? Because I can't see it all. We're at like 61 point something. Uh, so it, we we really would appreciate your subs. We're trying to get to 100,000 by the end of the year. That would be amazing if you guys could do that. That would help us get found in YouTube. It's getting harder and harder for channels uh, under 100,000 to get found in YouTube because the algorithm changes. They yep. constantly change everything. So anything you can do to help, thank you guys. It would be appreciated. Speaking of subscriber counts i wanted to bring this up uh rooster teeth is not really doing so hot this month uh, a oh, lot of wow. a lot of people have been uh let's see if they're how bad it is yeah there's a lot of red there are a couple days where they've had well then there's days that it stays the same it didn't go up either yeah now they have changed the subscriber count i think it's going to take them a while to get to 10 million because it seems like they're going backwards um <laughs> i don't know it, it is they're losing oh. their numbers i mean that's for sure i think i think fans are are sort of voicing their opinion on what they think of rooster teeth this no, is a real good look fair though it's a drop in the bucket compared to how many subs they have oh yeah i mean so, i mean it's not like a lot when you're losing 440 subs in one day when you have nine point something million it's not that <laughs> it's not like james charles where you're watching it crash in real time right you know? right so yeah it's not it's not really a, a good look <laughs> for them but like we were saying, there have been other people that have come out since uh, Grey Haddock tried to make, uh, uh, I guess, excuses on Twitter. He was talking about, you know, obviously a nerve was hit with all these people coming out. And I think mm -hmm. there were some people coming out on uh, other platforms too. Now we did have, like I said, we had a Rooster Teeth insider come to us. Uh, that person. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We, we had... Uh, one come to us after we put out the first video we had multiple other mm -hmm. animators come to us that said yeah this is what happened mm -hmm. this is exactly what happened and now we have uh mike chapman tweeting directly at gray haddock now mike chapman did work for rooster teeth a uh, lead 2d fx animator for two years at rooster teeth and this is a little inside baseball but he said i understand the need to cover your ass but you were the head of animation while deplorable things happened. 
Okay, that deplorable. That's all we're, we're hearing a lot of things that people are deplorable. saying there's a lot of things in the background. They're not saying what because they don't want to get into it. But there were some really crappy things apparently that went down. And um, we can find out what they are if we want to do. But I just don't want to put anybody's, potentially put somebody in harm's way. But go ahead. I, I think some of those probably were the, uh, the working conditions, mm -hmm. the ridiculous hours, the lack of overtime pay. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon to hear stories. And you, you heard this a lot from EA back in the day where people were basically living on the couches in the office mm -hmm. to get work done and, and gray even admits here that uh you know his wife would see him two or three nights a week because he basically slept at the office to get the work done you know and that said everybody else so it wasn't like right. you know i well, i work so hard it's like so did everybody and this happens a lot with uh companies where a lot of times you have somebody at the top of the company they set the tone for the the whole organization so if you have somebody who's in charge of your department that's a workaholic, nine times out of 10, they're going to just assume that you are too. Right. And they're going to expect that you are too. If they don't have a home life, if they're like, you know, not married, don't have kids, whatever, don't care if they're ever at home, a lot of times, this has been my personal experience, if they live at the office, they expect you to, too. Yeah, so this isn't right, but go ahead. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Genlock was a major resource hog. That's what we heard from oh, our we heard insider. That repeatedly. Said that Genlock basically pulled uh, resources away from from other projects at Rooster Teeth. Everything at Rooster Teeth suffered because of Genlock, which was Gray's baby. That is mm -hmm. what we're being told. We weren't there, but we have multiple people tell us right. this. And now we have a Rooster Teeth animator speaking out and saying, yes, this is exactly what happened. And most of them won't speak out because they're afraid they're going to get blacklisted. Right. I don't think this guy we know how We know how that goes, because that's what we got to the place. We wouldn't say anything about comics or different things until we just got tired of it. We're just like, that's it. We're saying something. But go yeah. ahead. Uh, no one's going to get this, but how long did it take for you to approve that nano smoke? Just curious. That's probably a little inside baseball. Uh, we did hear that Gray wanted things perfect, and he would take forever to approve things. Well, if it wasn't true that he was a problem... Why the heck, when they had made the announcements of changes at Rooster Teeth, was one of the announcements going to be that he was stepping down his head and going to something else in a creative role? You don't take somebody who's highly effective and put them into another role if they're highly effective. You know what I'm saying? You don't demote somebody unless there's a reason for it. So this whole idea that, oh, he, well, no, no, he's just picking on him. He got, Rooster Teeth admitted they demoted him. Yeah. in a nice way, but that's what they did originally. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. Like, if there was no... Because he tried to say that he was... And that's what I pointed out yesterday uh, in his, you know, rebuttal, which I, I will put a link to that. But he tried to say that he had discussed being phased out for two years. I'm uh -huh. like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when they bring Margaret Dean in to pinch hit... And basically say, you're 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 relegated to, to creative. And then suddenly you get, get gone. Right, so you got demoted twice. You got demoted... Uh, from being the head of animation to uh, just being a production guy to now you're completely out the door. I'm sorry. It looks to me like they realized too late mm -hmm. that he was a problem and they got rid of him. Uh, if they had a plan of succession in, in line, they would not have brought Margaret Dean over right. to, to just kind of try to put the fires but out. But to be fair, though, it's not just this guy's fault because the higher ups would have known there was a problem and, and before this. So they're just as much to blame as as gray is it's just like with star wars like everybody's mad about you know ryan johnson but above him kathleen kennedy is supposed to oversee everything so ultimately bucks off with her isn't she more as much to blame if not more so than ryan johnson i think the same things with here isn't rooster teeth the higher the people in charge as much to blame if not more so than gray if they knew there was problems they knew things were getting done in time if the new crunch was an issue weren't aren't they everybody as much if not more so to blame well because somebody had to be taken out to the uh taken out to the streets and tarred and feathered to make it look like... I'm not know, excusing for his behavior, I'm just saying. No, no, no. But I'm saying what usually happens is the underlings fall on the sword for, uh -huh. for poor management. So it could have been, you know, Matt Hollum's all the way at the That's top. That's what I'm saying. Or somebody at uh, Warner Brothers or somebody who had the final say, but Gray was the one that had to get, get mm -hmm. gone. And, uh, you I'm know... I'm not saying he didn't deserve to get gone or he did or didn't. I don't know. What I'm saying is, you know, it, from my understanding, this person was a big problem. We're hearing that repeatedly. So I 100%, you know, there's too many consistencies with, with uh, and separate people discussing stuff with us that I, I, there has to be some truth to it. 
But um, I don't think it's just him that was the problem. Is what I'm trying to say. Right. Well, what I'm gonna say is is Mike Chapman is not one of our insiders. No. Uh, and Mike Chapman's coming out publicly. So now we have like four or five people mm -hmm. that have independently confirmed mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Gray was a problem. Genlock was a problem. Genlock pretty much uh, pulled all the resources. Yeah. From all the other animated and projects. The other projects didn't get the, the staff they needed. Right, right. So that is that is what brings us up. So now, after Rooster Teeth announces layoffs, after some videos and some other uh, speculation go up about the future of Genlock, here comes the, the friendly media. The friendly media, and this is very this is a very misleading headline because let's talk about this. They're talking about DC Comics doing a Genlock comic book. And DC Comics isn't at the best of places with Warner Brothers right now either. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But um, this headline is not true. DC's Genlock comic book bridges season one and the now confirmed season two. Okay. If you go down, and we'll read a little bit of this, but if you go down, they basically said that uh, what we're doing, this is the, uh, the writer, I believe the writer, says what we're doing or what we're going to be doing is really going to be setting up what will eventually be coming in season two, although perhaps not in ways you think. And, so they don't want to call it book because it's cheaper. Is that what you're going to tell me? I'm thinking that's what's going to happen, yeah. But they do say in here that season two has not been officially confirmed. Yeah, the comic book will pick up at the end of season one, although season two of the popular series hasn't been officially announced by Rooster Teeth. They're they, firmly on board with the comic book. They're firmly on board with everything in the comic book, and it sets up what will eventually be coming in, in season two. Grey Haddock, whose baby Genlock was, is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, the future of Rooster Teeth is in doubt. They just laid a bunch of people off. Do you really think the chances of there being a Genlock season two are very good at this point. Well, they're just making a, it sounds to me like you're making a comic book version of it. And we're trying to, to, to play it off like, oh, oh, we are doing it. We're just doing this first to try to either one, get the finances to do a season two or, and get the permission or two, just to do this and then say, oh, there was a season two, but it's a comic book because it's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, that, well, that's just it. It is cheaper to do a comic book. So that might be what they're going to, they're going to do. Like this is what probably maybe possibly would have happened, but it has not been officially announced yet. I don't think it's going to be announced. I don't know. So yeah, it sounds like a lot of wishful thinking yeah. uh, to me and it hasn't been confirmed with Grey Haddock gone and their staff being cut and Warner Media uh, pruning all the bushes they own. Well, now they'll turn around and say it's confirmed just because they're going to be dicks about it. You watch. <laughs> I just think it's so weird. Like, it's now confirmed season two, and they said right here that it has not been announced. Yeah, that was really... Why would you... Okay, I don't understand this. Like, how much were they given to write this article? Because it doesn't make any sense to put that in the ti in the headline. The timing. And I'm just saying. Yeah, really no, weird. that's exactly it. They probably went to them, and they're like, hey, look, we're getting beat up out here, guys, so make sure you, you put that season two's coming honest. And, uh, you know, I they, mean, they, the title is very much misleading. Yeah. I mean, there might be a season two. They might've actually worked on it at the same time as season one. Who knows? That's possible. Who knows? Cause sometimes that, that happens. I'm where, sure we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. We'll so, find out. But Grey Haddock is no longer involved. Now the thing that's funny is this is sort of like, you know, one company that's living on borrowed time, working with another company owned by Warner brothers. That's living on borrowed time because DC comics is not in the best of places right now. Mm -hmm with Warner. I mean, Warner is cutting everything. And, uh, you know, there's been a rumor that DC Comics might get gone in the near future because uh, DC Comics is owned by Warner. Comic book publishing is not making making bank these and days. And Warner owns Rooster Teeth. They own Rooster Teeth. So, I mean... It's like a blindling the blind. That's what I'm here. saying. So that's, of course, why it went to DC. Like, they're making it like, oh my gosh, DC picked it up. No, no. Warner owns both. Yeah. So it's not a big deal, but it sounds like Warner shifting it around because they want to hold on to the, the property for some reason. But well, anyway. Yeah, but that kind of goes goes hand in hand with some of our other insiders who said that they think the the end game for all of this is that Rooster Teeth and Elation and Crunchyroll might all kind of get rolled in with Cartoon Network Studios. Right, right, right. What I'm just saying, people, people, sure people understand that DC is owned by Warner, who also yeah. owns. I, I just want to make sure they understand that. So why would they go to a comic form? Because they own both. Right, right. So this is like it's like Marvel with. Disney. Disney. You know, right, why why right. is Marvel doing these, like, they were doing Disney theme park comics for a while. Mm -hmm. Why are they doing that? Because they're owned by the same company. But, you know, DC's really trimming the fat lately. They they cut Vertigo. They cut Mad Magazine. Well, yeah, because they're all worn by Warner. And Warner guys, like, cutting everything. 
yeah so what's probably going to happen is all this all this stuff is going to just kind of gel together and uh you know the bean counters at at t from my understanding uh they don't they don't really see the need for 50 different animation studios mm -hmm. and whatever they're just like you know redundancies according to it's that. a redundancy why do we have you know nine different companies producing the same product when we just need an animation division and we need a live action well, division and we need a here's know. where i disagree with them though because you might have nine different companies with all producing different things and because it takes so many people to produce things you need nine different companies to produce all these things but they don't see it that way no you know? they and, don't. And, and their decisions aren't necessarily the right ones is what i'm saying i mean you might actually legitimately need nine different companies to keep up and they don't seem to understand that they're just going well, we only need five of those or three of those it's like you can't do the same output I'm just saying. And, you know, when you've got the bean counters in charge and they're not creatives, they don't understand the difference between, like, an anime audience and, like, the people that watch Scooby-Doo. Right. You know, uh, and to them, it's like, it's all cartoons. So we're just going to And they don't understand the time, the time investment in this because, you know, we've run into this before with things we do. You work for somebody who doesn't understand what you do. They think you just snap your fingers and it's done. They don't understand that this one little thing they can look at in like five minutes took you like three weeks you know they don't get that yeah and especially with animation i mean it takes you know for a 20 minute uh 20 to 30 minute animated show you know we're talking like dozens or hundreds of people mm -hmm. uh working on that show uh people don't understand how much it costs i mean i know i remember back when frederator was kickstarting being puppy cat and there were some animation fans i mean you think they would know but they were they were complaining about how much they were asking for they were asking for like seven or eight hundred thousand dollars for like a 10 or 15 minute short but you don't realize how much it actually costs right they don't understand what's involved so they're going to try to cut down the amount of studios they're going to try to consolidate this they're going to demand which is why they get the crunch and all that they demand mm. the moon not understanding how much time this takes and if you had to pay fair market value for these things, you can't be cutting the, you need to be allotting more money, not cutting the costs. Yeah. So what I worry about with Warner, especially not, not the other companies so much with the streaming wars, but with Warner, especially is they're going to be like, well, let's just do just a bunch of live action. Cause it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Let's get some, um, some cheap talent mm -hmm. and slap together some live action shows and throw it on the mm -hmm. streaming service. It's like Disney's doing. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's a Disney, what? Disney's yeah. doing it. And, and everybody's like, this is stupid. And so what's going to happen is we're going to have a ton of, like we talked about the other day, we're going to have a ton of disposable content. Right. And we're going to have, you know, you watch it once and that's it. And and it gets a season or two, probably not three because they don't want to pay royalties. And then you just move on to the next mm -hmm. thing. And you're don't not get too involved in a show. No. So you're not going to have like these pop culture uh, icons anymore because the, the time and the resources, it's just not going to be there. It's not going to be there. It's mm -hmm. all disposable. Everything's everything's written on a napkin now. Or if so. something does get through that becomes a pop culture phenomenon, then most likely the people that created it won't ever, you know, benefit from it. So yeah, so that's that's kind of what we're looking at. But uh, long term for Rooster Teeth, I don't think it looks good. Uh, I, I could see them again, maybe picking this up for Toonami, but uh, the word is it, it didn't perform as well. And Gray tried to argue that it did. But uh, internally, I've heard it. It did yeah, not. Here's perform. the thing. You know what I love about that? When you never can see numbers. Yeah. You, take my word for it. It's doing great. Like here's a she all the time. Star Wars. Take my word for it. It's doing phenomenal on Netflix. Where are the numbers? Oh, oh they're internal. We can't show you that. Right. It's like you know, I'm tired of hearing things are doing great, even though it doesn't seem to have the demand for it. Heck, I was at Target the other day and I was looking for the dolls. They didn't even have space for them. It wasn't they were sold out. There wasn't even a space for them now. They probably just did one run just to, to shut people up. So and I'm just like, you know, it, it, I don't think it was the slam dunk they wanted you to believe it was. I think they had a few diehards that were their friends or that, that were the right, the, the people they were pitching to. But most kids just, oh, whatever, don't care. Yeah. And, you know, and we're not seeing the numbers. I think the same here. Well, take my word for it. It did fantastic. Okay, where are the numbers? Do they have numbers for this? Uh, they just said it was like number two on, on Adult Swim. Uh, Gray said it was number two on Adult Swim. But, you know, I mean, he said against college football did really well. But again, you know. Against college football. Yeah. That's, the, that's, 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 that's their basis That's here. what he was saying, yeah. Against so, college football. Against okay. college football. So. So, you know, because th those audiences overlap. I'm just like, you know, of course, okay. Uh, 
I just I, that's what you're comparing just, it to. College just, football. I'm just putting out there what he said. So it's like saying, you know, oh well, you know, the the uh the the new whopper outsold, you know, it was number two in the market. It outsold you know, the cafeteria lunch. You know, it's like yeah, you know, it's kinda I, like I know, that. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's it's whatever you just have to take the word for it. But I guess where the cost skyrocketed, not just the production, but obviously the, the voice talent, they had some pretty big names. They did. Yeah, you know, they had David Tennant on the show for crying out loud, you know, so it's not cheap. No. Yeah. You know, it's not cheap um but uh yeah so we'll watch this uh i don't know i just I, I really think rooster teeth is is living on borrowed time at least the current uh incarnation of it but they're optimistic they're gonna be doing uh they're gonna be doing the rooster teeth expo next year it's gonna be a really awkward that's gonna be interesting that's I gonna be it. awkward because half their staff is gone i know that's gonna be interesting you know? so if you're interested in that it's coming supposedly coming july 3rd through the 5th there you go fourth of july weekend there might be some fireworks uh there yeah so uh, hopefully fireworks, not a dumpster fire. But um, all right, guys, we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon and Geeky. Okay. Goodbye. Hey, guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.